So good afternoon, everybody, and what a beautiful afternoon it is. The sun is shining here uh, in the south of England, but I'm very, very, in fact, I'm delighted and a little bit honoured as well to be joined by uh, Christophe Muniez, the chief executive of the French Golf Federation, and of course, uh, Ken Schofield, former executive director of the European Tour. Uh, Christophe, all the way from Paris, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you, Jan, for your kind invitation to... Uh to say a few words about uh, golf in France. Fantastic. No, it's, it's, uh, the pleasure is all mine, believe me. And Ken, of course, uh, from your conservatory, like myself, uh, in the south of England. How, how are you today, Ken? Yes, we're doing very well, thank you, Ian. And it's wonderful to see Christoph. And uh, I think we're all very envious of uh, the wonderful work that he and the French Federation did to have golf come right back uh, into full swing this week throughout all of France. Well done, Christophe. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Thank uh, you. Exactly. Wonderful words there. And, and very true. And, and the reason actually we're, we're here today is because we know golf is back in England as well. Uh, we only obviously found out on Sunday that was going to be the case. We left ourselves a little time to prepare. But of course, uh, Christophe, you were lobbying hard to get golf back into France. Uh, how did you do it? Um, uh, honestly, uh, actually, that <laughs> it has been quite difficult to convince the public authorities in France. We all know that in the UK, golf is a very popular sport. There are a lot of golfers in England. This is not much the, the, the same in, in, in France. Uh, even if we are lucky enough to have a bit more than 400,000 licenses, I mean, member of the federation. In addition to that, you can add... Uh, an extra 300,000 uh, occasional or recre recreational players. So a total of uh, 700,000 uh, players. But it's true to say that uh, golf is not still perceived as a popular sport in comparison to football, tennis, uh, cycling, and, and yeah. so on. So during this lockdown, uh, the first thing we had in mind was to... Uh, try to explain and to convince the public authorities that uh, you can play golf safely. Uh, of course, this uh, what was at stake with this virus is to ensure that you can play golf without uh, risking any contamination with the, the, vir the virus. And uh, so we have to demonstrate and to uh, explain that with uh, certain rules, you are able to play golf and... Uh, to play golf safely, actually. So, Christoph, just break down some of the rules that you put into place then, because golf returned in France on Monday, didn't it? Monday the 11th, so four days, about four days of it now. Um, but the announcement was made back in April the 28th, so it essentially gave you a two-week window, didn't it, to properly plan and prepare. What are the uh, rules in place for people playing golf in France at the minute? So the, the, uh, first, you mentioned the uh, declaration of the, our prime minister on the 28th of yeah. April. Uh, before that, uh, our president, Emmanuel Macron, that was on the 13th of April, uh, said that uh, maybe uh, it would be possible to uh, start uh, uh, running, cycling, and maybe other sport. So we had to, a bit more than three weeks to prepare uh, ah. the, the golf club to, to reopen and it's true that uh, the, the 28th was uh, really a very important date the 28th of April because uh, from this date we have worked very closely free with our uh, French Minister of Sport and other uh, minister also uh, Health Care, uh, Minister of Interior which is in charge of uh, policing and stuff like that and um, the first thing to do is to uh, uh, conceive a, a set of rules and uh, we all know on now these, these rules uh, you have to avoid using uh, rakes in the bunker you can't touch the yeah. the flag the the, the pin right. uh, you have to play uh, with a minimum of four players at the very beginning we're just allowed to play with two players but we've been lucky enough to explain that even with four players uh, you are safe when you play golf on a regular golf course. Uh, we had also to uh, keep a minimum of 10 minutes between two groups because in some golf club, they play every eight minutes. 
So we have to ask to our golf club to uh, for the tea time to play every 10 minutes and not less. We uh, also have to uh, uh, display a lot of uh, visual communication in the golf club uh, on which you can s uh, see the, 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 current, the current rules uh, and uh, the yep. rules which are explained to the, to the players. So it's mainly uh, the way you organize uh, the game on, on the course, the way you communicate with the golfers, and the fact that you don't use any uh, device on which you can put your hand and another player could be contaminated by uh, putting his hand uh, just after you, that kind of stuff. Yes, it sounds very similar in, in sort of England over here. We know obviously Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are yet to sort of give the green light for that. Now, Ken, you're involved, aren't you, at uh, West Hills Golf Club? We were talking about that before. Um, what sort of protocols have we got in place in England at the minute to get people playing again? Yes, well, you know, I was very, very pleased to see that uh, the announcement uh, as recently as last Sunday evening by Prime Minister Johnson gave authority for the golf courses to open up in England as of Wednesday of this week. So I was very, very pleased to see that. And of course, we are in a different situation uh, entirely, really, from France, where it is one government, one federation uh, making its case, the compelling case for golf to resume. Whereas, of course, we know that we have four different countries within the United Kingdom and indeed with devolved governments yes. in Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland, uh, taking, if you like, different approaches. We know, for example, that golf, as, as we've said, has been uh, given the green light in England and indeed from Monday of next week, similarly in Wales. But we await Northern Ireland and Scotland. So, of course, we're in a very different situation. But obviously, I think many of the Many of the regulations or the edicts, if you like, that Christoph has mentioned, I think will be in place, certainly at our club in Surrey, at West Hill, where eight-minute uh, intervals, members only, and two balls. Similarly, with, uh, if you like, social distancing and avoiding uh, touching any of the remaining course furniture. So I think it's uh, pretty much as... As uh, Prime Minister Johnson said, that we must stay alert and use common sense. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the sun will yeah, help. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it always will. And uh, as I said to you before, Ken, I think certainly over here in the UK and Christophe, it might be the same in France. It's going to get pretty hot next week. So uh, we're going to see a lot of yeah. people out on the course. Now, over, over here... Um, I know from speaking to a number of professionals at the minute uh, who are involved with the club, for the first week at least, it's going to be members only. Have you adopted that approach in France as well, or is that up to discretion of the clubs, Christophe? Yeah, good, good point. And uh, actually, that, that was a bit difficult to deal with this uh, variety of uh, golf clubs because you have the uh, private golf club, commercial or public golf yeah. club, and semi-private golf clubs. So... Uh, um, we we uh, just um, set one pack of rules, uh, one size fits all. I mean, in terms of the the, the rules and regulation for this period, we didn't try to have uh, different rules for different kind of golf clubs. And uh, beyond that, um, we uh, and I, I understand and uh, I heard what uh, Ken said about the. The group of players, uh, are you be allowed to play by two or by four on, on the golf course? The fact is that we have seen in many countries, uh, in Canada, for instance, and uh, also in Australia, they have started to uh, with only a group of two players. And then a few weeks after, uh, then they have been able to uh, play again with a group of four players. So that, that could be uh, maybe the, the, the best way to deal with this potential difficulty. It's true to say that in, in France, uh, the, the, I mean, when we brought our, our case in front of the authorities, we have been asked to limit the number of players playing in one group at, at two. And week after week, we have explained, we have 
demonstrated that it doesn't change a lot of things um, if you play uh, at four instead of two. You just have to keep the same rules in terms of uh, uh, social distancing, uh, but you are able on the tee, on the fairway, and even on the green to play with a group of four players. And it, it changed a lot, actually, because uh, uh, regardless it is a, a member of golf club or a commercial golf club, we know that uh, beyond the, uh, the, the strong demand from the players themselves, there are also economic issues for the golf clubs. So if you are able to play uh, with a group of four players, it's definitely easier for the golf club to deal with this very important demand. So maybe what could be done for one or two weeks, allow uh, just a group of two players, but then um, uh, if it's possible, then go back to group of four players. It's really easier for the golf clubs, that's yeah. for sure. So ha have you been looking at what other uh, associations have been doing across the world um, and sort of kind of taking bits what they've been doing and, and adopting it into your system? Yeah, yeah, yes. We we have done a kind of a, a global benchmark and we have worked very closely with the, the Swede because in Sweden, they didn't have the same kind of lockdown ah. that we have experienced in continental Europe. And um, so they were a bit uh, ahead of us. Uh, Denmark also. Uh, so uh, between the, 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 the group of chief executive of the National Federation in, in Europe and also with the UK, we have exchanged a lot of best practice and uh, to see uh, what could be down, down of course, uh, with one main uh, goal in mind to ensure that uh, uh, people, uh, golfer, won't take any risk uh, playing on the golf course. Yes, uh, absolutely. And how, uh, Christoph, how has it gone this week? It started on Monday, of course, the course is opened. We've now had four full days, into the fifth full day uh, today. How's it been received in France? So, uh, first of all, of course, when we have uh, announced uh, end of uh, last week that we will be able to play golf again, uh, the golfers and the golf club, they were thrilled, very happy, of course, you can imagine that. And uh, I would say that 80% uh, of the golf club, they've decided to open on Monday, so the first day. Uh, some others uh, uh, have decided to uh, take a bit more time to to train their staff to ensure that everything is uh, well prepared in, in the golf course. So some of them take a bit more time. And uh, we had really uh, only good feedbacks from every single golf club. We didn't face any yeah. difficulties. Uh, the player, they were so happy to go back to the golf course that they have really followed the rules by the book. And uh, we didn't have any incidents uh, uh, at all. Uh, we have a bit more than 700 golf courses in France, and today only two are still closed because they are located inside a public park and they have not been allowed to reopen their gates because of their uh, this specificity. But all of the others, they have reopened and it's doing very well. Excellent. That, that is wonderful to hear. I will be catching up with a number of... Um, uh, tour professionals over the next couple of days to find out how things have been going on in England as well. Now, talking about sort of tours, etc. Uh, Ken, obviously, you're heavily involved in the European tour, as we know. It's looking like professional golf is going to get back underway uh, fairly soon. I know the PGA Tour are looking to resume uh, on the 11th of June. Uh, the European Tour uh, at the end of April, the ladies' European Tour uh, middle of June. Uh, and the LPA middle of July. Do, do we think that's the right decision, Ken? Ian, I think it was the only decision. I mean, I, I, I really think that uh, the government, uh, when March 23 came with the lockdown and indeed seeing how virtually all, all forms of sporting competition has really been suspended, uh, we now know, for example, that there is much talk going on uh, behind the scenes for renewal for the, the elite leagues of the Premier League, the, the 
English uh, Championship, yeah. for example. Uh, I know through um, being a president of the Surrey County Cricket Club that uh, we have to await. There'll be no cricket in England before the 1st of July. Uh, as, we, as we read and see, the ECB are hopeful that the West Indies will come and play three test matches, perhaps starting in the second week of July, to be then followed by a three-test series with Pakistan. But in terms of the, the, the golf tour, I think they, they, they've actually had to comply with really the government's lockdown yeah. and um, the fact that uh, un until certainly um, the month of July, possibly behind closed doors, because quite simply and quite frankly, the government will not permit uh, gatherings of, I guess, more than, what, 30 to 50 people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And Ken, I must, uh, I must admit, you might not like me after saying this, when it comes to cricket, um, I'm actually a Yorkshire <laughs> fan. So uh, I apologise. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, might be, that, that, might be, that might be one discipline where we could perhaps take, take a few euros, if not francs, off Christoph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, now that you, Although you no, said it no there, Ken, well you... he hits a golf ball, Ian, he may well strike a few boundaries with a cricket bat. <laughs> I can um, try. I can give it a try. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we won't set up a game then. Uh, we'll play it safe. <laughs> uh, now, Ken, you just mentioned it there about obviously golf behind closed doors. Now, we, we are relatively fortunate, aren't we? Golf can sort of be behind closed doors. One thing that can't be played behind doors is the Ryder Cup, surely. Now, uh, Christoph, you are the man, uh, or one of the men responsible for bringing the Ryder Cup to the Golf National. Could you imagine, could you imagine doing it behind closed doors with no crowds? Uh, honestly, uh, I would uh, say very frankly that uh, you can play almost every single tournament behind closed doors closed doors but not the Ryder Cup <laughs> this might be the only <laughs> tournament that uh, wouldn't advocate for uh, to, to, to see it played uh, behind closed doors because it's definitely part of the uh, it's the DNA of the event itself uh, to have the, the the public and the spectators and the the, the crowd the atmosphere so uh, I, I can even imagine playing a, a regular 72 tournament, e even a very important one uh, behind closed, closed doors uh, for the Ryder Cup. Uh, if that was my decision, I wouldn't advocate for, for that. But I, I know that uh, there is many things at stake uh, and it's so difficult to reschedule a Ryder Cup. So uh, I, I know a difficult decision, e e decision it would be. But uh, honestly, uh, I can't imagine a, a Ryder Cup with no spectators. And am I right? You guys might be able to correct me on this. Am I right in thinking the plan is for it still to go ahead, the Ryder Cup? Is that right? The, uh, as, as far Ken, as... Would, would you, do you know the other one from tracks? Yes. Yes. Okay, well, that, that would be quite difficult, wouldn't it? But um, anyway... Go ahead, Ken. Sorry. Yep. I didn't get the question, Ian, but I suspect you were inquiring whether maybe we felt it would be possible or, or indeed preferable to have a Ryder Cup without spectators. Well, we know, sadly... It's along those there lines, yeah. There is a precedent for delaying a Ryder Cup, and we know these were very, very sad and indeed tragic uh, events of 9-11 going back ne nearly two decades, uh, we know uh, today that this is a very different type of tragedy, but it's an ongoing one. And uh, I, although it's a very different time, and the PGA of America as the host for this year's uh, Ryder Cup matches, and indeed the European uh, Ryder Cup um, group, um, Ryder Cup Europe, uh, will in, in many ways uh, probably want to accede to the PGA of America's ideas on whether the matches should take place and indeed whether they would have to take place behind closed doors. It's going to be a very, very difficult decision, I think, for them to take because we know that really 
nobody, no, neither of the two captains, Steve Stricker or Podrick Harrington, or indeed many, if any of the players, would want to play with absolutely no, no atmosphere and no, no, no spectators. The Ryder Cup uh, in the last 25 or 30 years, really almost since that Muirfield Village win by the Europeans under Tony Jacklin, yes. um, uh, if you like, brought the Ryder Cup to notice in the United States, has become a, a two-way street between the players playing for no reward and not really wanting to play for any reward, and the spectators from the United States and all over Europe spending a lot of money, a lot of money in traveling to the matches, in taking hotel rooms uh, to stay, and of course to purchase the tickets. So I, I would have thought that um, the idea perhaps of what happened in 2001 with a deferment uh, for 12 months to enable the matches to take place in the tradition that they are now played is something that uh, will weigh very heavily, I think, with the PGA of America. Yeah, certainly. It would be a terrible shame, wouldn't it, for the Ryder Cup to go ahead without without fans. It really would. Now, look, gentlemen, I, I won't keep you. I do really, really appreciate you both taking time out of your days. It's an absolute pleasure, as I said before. Just, just before we do go, uh, of course, uh, Christoph, congratulations, by the way, for getting golf back into France and going forward. Um, when do you think we'll see? Uh, when do you think we'll see everything sort of back to normal? Retail getting back open again for club pros being able to sell products, etc. Are you confident it will happen sooner rather than later? Yes, yes, we we, we had some good news uh, well, yesterday. We must uh, hope, we must first, um, the golf club they have been able to reopen their pro shop uh, starting uh, last Monday which was a very good news. Uh, regarding yeah. teaching, you are also uh, allowed to teach uh, individuals or group, which is also a good news for our uh, PGA uh, teachers. Excellent. And regarding a restaurant, clubhouse, uh, it should be possible to reopen these facilities uh, starting the 2nd of June. This is what we've heard yesterday. Wow. So we hope that golf is going to be back on tracks uh, in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully. Fantastic. And I, I'm sure you agree with me, Ken. This is something we need to, to keep an eye on with France for golf in England and obviously Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland when it comes back. At the minute, of course, the PGA have stated in the UK, uh, retail golf pro shops cannot be open. They can't be open yet. That surely will change. And I'm sure we'll keep a close eye on how it works out sure. in France, uh, Christophe, as sure, well. Sure. So yes, um, I think uh, Christoph. Ian, we must we must congratulate Christoph and in the entire yeah. French Federation for setting such a, a, a real lead. But, and again, as we said at the outset you. of, of uh, your show, we're very very pleased that uh, that England has has uh, followed suit more or less immediately with Wales to follow on Monday. Yeah. We must hope that Northern Ireland and Scotland can soon follow suit. We know how golfers traditionally and historically are self-policing. Uh, I've got absolute, um, complete uh, faith in the fact that the golfing community worldwide will obey the current re restrictions in terms of social distancing. And uh, hopefully we will see a continued down downward trend with, uh, with infection uh, and that... Uh, not only will the courses remain open, but very soon the clubhouses and equally importantly, the professional shops and practice grounds so that mm -hmm. the pros can go back to their retailing and their teaching and the clubs can go back to selling their, their food and, and their wine and that we could get back, if, if not to normal, yeah. at least to a new normal that can work uh, both uh, physically, mentally and economically. Good. That's a degree. Definitely. Fantastic words, Ken. Fantastic words. And uh, yeah, I, and uh, absolutely. And, and it's positive. It's all positive. This is the wonderful thing. Let's, let's be honest. This is why we wanted to come on to the show today and talk to you, uh, a few gentlemen. Golf is back. 
and it's fantastic. I can't wait to get my clubs out now. I, I need to go get out on the course, Jeff. So, uh, Christoph Munias, thank well you done, so, yeah. so much for joining us. Thank you, uh, Jan. Thank you, Ken. Paris. It's been a pleasure. And Ken, thank you. Thank always, you. always Bye -bye, an absolute Christoph. pleasure. Gentlemen, we will thank speak you. soon. Thank, thank you very you. Bye -bye. much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you, Ian. Bye, -bye. Bye Christoph. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jan.